Well, welcome back to the sixth video in our series on normalization and functional dependencies. We ended the last video talking about super keys, keys, candidate keys, prime attributes, and non-prime attributes. So in this video, we'll begin with a more in-depth discussion of first normal form. So let's proceed. First normal form is now considered to be part of the formal definition of a relation in the basic relational model or flat relational model. Historically, it was designed to disallow multivalued attributes, composite attributes, and their combinations. Make a note of that. Multivalued attributes and composite attributes are not allowed in first normal form. It states that the domain of an attribute must include only atomic values. Atomic values are simple and indivisible. It also states that any value of an attribute in a tuple must be a single value from the domain of that attribute. Therefore, first normal form disallows having a set of values or a tuple of values or a combination of both as an attribute value in a single tuple. In other words, first normal form disallows relations within relations or relations as attribute values within tuples. You cannot have an attribute that exists of children, for example, in an employee relation if there's a possibility that there might be more than one child. If there are multiple children, then you need to decompose that relation. In other words, take the children attribute out in order to convert that children attribute into another relation. The only attribute values permitted by first normal form are single atomic or indivisible values. Now, how do we achieve this? Take a look at the techniques. Remove the attribute, as we've already discussed, and place in a separate relation. Expand the key. In other words, add an attribute to the key in order to have one child in each tuple. Or use several atomic values. For example, instead of having a children attribute, have child 1, child 2, and child 3 three separate attributes if you decided that three was an ample number of attributes to have to cover children. I once knew a lady that had 12. She would have presented a problem. Consider the department relation as shown in this figure. The primary key is D number. See the underline? Now suppose we extend that by including D locations as we see in this figure. D numbers primary key and we've added the D locations attribute. We assume that each department can have a number of locations. The department schema shown here and the, a sample relation state are sh is shown here. As we can see this is not first normal form because D locations is not an atomic value. This one has Bel Air, Sugar Land, and Houston. There are two ways we can look at the delocations attribute. The domain of delocations contains atomic values, but some tuples can have a set of these values. In this case, delocations is not functionally dependent on the primary key, D number. Or the domain of delocations contains a set of values and is therefore non-atomic. In this case, D number does determine D locations because each set is considered to be a single member of the attribute domain. In either case, the department relation in this figure is not in first normal form. In fact, it doesn't even qualify as a relation according to our definition of a relation in a previous section. Informally, each relation resembles a table of values or to some extent a flat 
file of records. It's called a flat file because each record has a simple linear or flat structure. There are three main techniques to achieve first normal form for such a relation. One, remove the attribute delocations that violates first normal form and place it in a separate relation. De department locations, for example, along with the primary key D number of department. So you have another relation that has the department number and the location. In this case, the department number would be a foreign key linking it back to department. The primary key of the relation in this case is a combination of D number and D location as we see here. A distinct tuple in department locations exists for each location of the department. This decomposes the non first normal form relation into two first normal form relations, department and department locations. Another option, as we see demonstrated here in C, is to expand the key. D number and D location now make up the key. That will allow there to be a separate tuple in the original department relation for each location of the department. The disadvantage to this solution is the redundancy that it causes, as you can see here. A third option, if the maximum number of values is known for the attribute, for example, if it's known that at most there's going to be three locations for a department, then replace delocations attribute with three atomic attributes, delocation one, delocation two, and delocation three. This solution has the disadvantage of introducing null values if most departments have fewer than three locations. It further introduces spurious semantics about the ordering among the location values that was not originally intended. Querying on this attribute becomes more difficult. For example, how would you write a query to list the departments that have Bel Air as one of their locations if Bel Air could be in any one of those three attributes. Of the three solutions that we just discussed, the first is generally considered to be the best because it does not suffer from redundancy and it is completely general, having no limit placed on a maximum number of values. You could have one department or a hundred department. You could have one location or a hundred locations. It wouldn't make any difference. In fact, if we choose the second solution, it will be decomposed further during subsequent normalization steps back into the first solution. First normal form also disallows multivalued attributes that are themselves composite. These are called nested relations because each tuple can have a relation within it. Figure 1510 shows how employee proj relation would appear if nesting is allowed. Each tuple represents an employee entity and the relation proj s with p number and hours as attributes within each tuple represents the employee's projects and the hours per week that employee works on each project. The schema of this imp proj relation can be represented as follows. imp underscore proj open paren ssn comma ename comma brace proj s open paren p number comma hours close paren close brace close paren. The set of braces identify the attribute proj s as multivalued, and we list the component attributes that form proj s between parentheses. Interestingly enough, 
recent trends for supporting complex objects and XML data attempt to allow and formalize nested relations within relational database systems, which were disallowed early on by first normal form. This is a violation of first normal form. Note that SSN is the primary key of MPROJ in A and B here, while P number is a partial key of the nested relation, P number and hours. That is, within each tuple, the nested relation must have unique values of P number. To normalize this in the first normal form, we remove the nested relation attributes into a new relation and propagate the primary key into that as the foreign key. Decomposition and primary key propagation yield the schemas MPROJ1 and MPROJ2 as shown in C. This procedure can be applied recursively to a relation with multi-level nesting to unnest the relation into first normal form relations. This is useful in converting an unnormalized relation schema with many levels of nesting into first normal form. The existence of more than one multivalued attribute in one relation must be handled carefully. As an example, consider the following non-first normal form relation. Person, SS no, comma, brace, car license number, brace, comma, open brace, phone number, close brace, close parentheses. This relation represents the fact that a person would have multiple cars and multiple phones. If strategy two that we discussed earlier were followed, it would result in an all key relation. Person in first normal form would have SS no car license number and phone number in each tuple. All three attributes would be identified as primary key. Well, that is our discussion of first normal form. Since we've been talking exclusively about first normal form in this video, Let's just go ahead and make it our mystery word. So go ahead and submit your mystery word. Go out and check your knowledge on the material covered in this video. And when you're ready, come on back and we'll proceed to second normal form.